morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about cast iron today. I'm not a cast iron expert, but I'm certainly a cast iron user. My mother picked this up at a yard sale this weekend. Uh, and the lady at the yard sale was asking two, three dollars for it. And uh, the man said, no, I'll just give it to her for two. So, Mother picked it up and didn't break a smile. Brought it right over to me. Um, and I'll, I, I'm going to go through the process of seasoning. I'm not going to go through a long process about cleaning because there are different people who do it different ways. I've tried several different ways. Just about everything except an e-tank. And I mentioned to Fred about an e-tank and he just looked at me and walked away. So we're not going to do an e-tank, <laughs> but uh, a couple of different ways. And if you can see, uh, this, this is pretty dirty, but it's not uh, bad. It's not too bad. I know that looks like rust to you in there. It's not really technically rust, I don't think. But um, you always clean cast iron when you get it, when you get this kind of old cast iron. Um, because you don't really know what's been done in this pan. Maybe somebody just cooked in it. Uh, maybe they caught motor oil in it. You just don't know. Uh, so I always clean them when I get them. A couple of different ways to clean them um, is you can fill a pan full of half and half vinegar and water and soak it. And most, of, and then wash it really good and scrub it and most of that will come out and that may would work with this. What I'm going to do with it is I'm going to uh, clean it with heat. My normal practice has been to put mine in my self-cleaning oven, close it, turn it on, let it run a cycle. You sometimes get a lot of smoke with that, and our admin on the porch, John Sellers, said he did that once and got fired. So I'm not going to recommend to anybody to do this, to do that. Um, I have a gas stove. I, I don't know how it would work on an electric stove. Another option is just to put it in your oven and turn your oven on as high as it'll go and leave it for three or four hours. You still have the smoke in the house. Uh, another thing that we do and we're going to do with this one is we have a gas grill, a propane grill that you can close. We're going to put this in the propane, your propane grill, close it, turn it up as high as it'll go and leave it about three hours and check it. Nine times out of ten, all of this crud will come out. Um, so I'm not really going to show you that process. What I'm going to show you is how to season it after it's cleaned. I am going to talk to you a little bit, though, about how to pick a cast iron skillet if you're out looking at yard sales. Um, I have cast iron skillets that had been dumped in a ditch and were totally rusted over, and now they're just great. Uh, this particular one... Um, my mother didn't know what it was, but she knew it was worthwhile because she knew it was old. And when she brought it to me, I did the first thing I always do. I flipped it over to see what I could read. And you can't read much on this. It's pretty corroded. But what you can see is this is the heat ring. And there are three notches in the heat ring. Three openings which tells me, unless there's something out there I don't know about, that this is a lodge skillet made in the 40s sometime, maybe up to early 50s. And lodge skillets made in the 30s and the 40s. If it had just one notch, just one notch here, uh, it would have been made in the 30s. And in the 40s, they started making them with three notches. So no matter what else is on here, I know that this is a lodge three-notch skillet. Uh, so there's a good chance it's going to be really good. It, this is a grill skillet. It's not a griddle. It's a grill skillet. And this has the, the raised uh, ridges to make uh, the marks on your meat when you sear meat in it. The other thing that you always look for is how does it sit? See, that does not move at all. It has no warping at all. Now, if you're out looking for a skillet and you find one that has a little warping, according to your stove, 
you may still get a lot of good use out of it. Uh, but it's always best to get one that's absolutely solid, doesn't warp, means nobody ever warped it in its use. Now, if you think about it, this is a pan that's been used now since at, at the longest possible time from 1940 approximately to 2015. This is a pretty old piece of uh, cast iron here and if it were um, used that whole time and, and taken good care of, it could be used that much longer as long as you don't cook it dry, you don't let it get uh, warped, you don't leave it out in a ditch. Uh, it, it's pretty solid. It's going to pretty much last forever as long as it's taken care of. So it's worth a day, a day and a half invested in making it back um, into something that has a place of honor in my kitchen. And once we get it clean, I'm going to show you how we season it for good use. Welcome back. It's actually been a couple of days since I showed you my ugly rusty skillet which was actually beautiful underneath. In this case, ugly was only skin deep. And beauty will last forever. So, this pan's been through the ringer since you saw it. Um, it spent about three hours in a really hot propane grill, as hot as I could get it. Um, then I used a wire brush on it. It still wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be. So I put it in the self-cleaning oven for about three hours, washed it again, and then I soaked it in half and half vinegar for a couple hours. So it isn't perfect. It's an old pan. We can tell from the markings on it it's old. I just took it out of some hot soapy water, and I'm going to start the seasoning process, which will take a couple of steps at least. What I have here is an old towel, one that I'm not going to use for anything else. I save them for this kind of job and I am wiping it as dry as I can. You want something to protect your table, newspaper, whatever. Uh, you want something to protect your hand. You always want to wear gloves. And you also want to protect your kitchen sink because what comes off of these is an oily mess sometimes and it's really bad to stain. So I do this in a dish pan and then throw the water outside instead of into my sink because I actually had to replace one sink. It got stained from this so badly. So if you'll see, this has been cleaned and dried. It's ready for seasoning. I hope you remember. Oh well, for you it was just a moment ago. How bad it looked. My mother picked this up at a yard sale for two dollars. I'm not an expert in dating cast iron, uh, but the back of this tells me that it's probably a lodge manufactured in the 40s. I tell that because there are three notches in the heat ring and it's got a number, gee, you know, I think that's a six. It could be a nine, but I think it's a six. As I say, I'm not an expert. So, I have another little piece of a towel. You know, paper towels really don't work very well for this because they leave fiber. And I have here a little lard. I use lard for seasoning. You can use something else if you like. Uh, you can use flaxseed oil is really good, but I don't generally keep that. If I had a bunch of cast iron to do, I would invest in a little bottle of flaxseed oil, but I don't. So I'm using lard. A lot of people use Crisco. You can use olive oil if you want it. Whatever oil you have, I, I really don't think just all oil is good. I think lard, uh, flaxseed oil, 
or even Crisco is your best bet. But people have their favorites. So if you'll see, I'm just rubbing the lard all over it. And you'll see there's still some rust, some dirt that comes off on my little piece of a towel here. The next step, this is on the outside, is to rub it dry. I did just rub lard all over it, now I'm going to try to rub it all off. Um, and the reason you're trying to rub it all off is because otherwise it'll puddle and make uneven black spots. And sometimes even when you think you've rubbed it all off, it puddles and makes uneven black spots. Wipe it until you think you've got it all off. And then wipe it just a little bit more. Because the skillet is soaking it up. And what we're going to do is heat it up in stages so that it polymerizes and makes a tough finish. Now the inside and up. Full disclosure, I have never done a grill skillet. So I'm going to work extra hard to not leave little puddles, but I, I may not succeed. So I'm rubbing the lard in between the ridges and all around the inside. And don't forget to do the rim. All around the inside. and the rim. Now I don't know about the process of making this particular skillet. Just to me, the amateur, it doesn't feel as glass smooth as the other cast iron I have from this era. And I don't know if it's because of the manufacture process in making these ridges or if it's something I've done differently but it may not have a glass smooth finish when I get done I hope it does but I'm being very careful to get some of the lard on every bit of the inside And then I'm going to be try just as hard to get every bit of it off. Now this is just the first coat. Well, I'm putting it into a 300 degree oven for an hour. I'll set the timer, turn the oven off, let it cool inside. When it's fully cool, I'll take it out and do this again. And then I'll set it for two hours on a really high temp. The highest temp my oven will give me. <clears throat> and then I'll let it cool inside. At that time, it'll probably be overnight. Don't forget the handle, by the way. If I like the finish I have, I'll stop. I'll just start using the pan and the seasoning part, the seasoning process will finish as I use the pan and cook in it. Missed a little spot. If it still doesn't look like I want it, I'll do a third seasoning. And I've never had one that needed more than that. Okay, this is dirty work. That's why I have the gloves on. If you can tell, I hope, very thin, light coat, whoops, all the way around, front, back, handle, top, rim, everything. This is now going to go in the oven 
upside down. And the purpose for that is to keep any excess oil, the lard, from pooling in the bottom and making black spots. So we're going in the oven now for an hour and then to let it cool naturally in the oven. And when that's done, I'll show you what we've got. Okay, we're back. This skillet has had an hour in the oven at 300. And it's cooled off. It's still a little bit warm, but it's you're able to pick it up. Um, and we're going to go for round two now back in the oven and you can see that it isn't finished but we're going to go through the same process again we're going to coat it with a thin coat of lard put my gloves back on this time. I might wish I had. Don't forget the rim. And then with another cloth. As I say, these are my away dish towels. They're clean but stained. And when I'm done with this, I'll really throw them away. And then wipe it off. It's actually looking pretty good for just its first time. And this time we'll do it at a much higher heat. I'm going to turn the oven up just as high as it will go and set my timer for two hours. This is not something you want to be doing while it's hot outside. You can see this is coated pretty evenly and wiped pretty dry. Flip it. And get the other side. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. Don't forget the handle. Okay, back in the oven on high, high heat for two hours. And this should be done. But if not, we'll do it one more time. We'll be back in a couple hours. Well, this finished up last night and I turned the stove off and went to bed. And this is what I have this morning. Um, I'm not... A, a, not too disappointed in this. I, I've never had a grill pan, so I'm not quite sure uh, how it's going to work as time goes on. But this looks pretty good. We've got uh, still a little bit of roughness right around the outside that I couldn't get off, but probably nobody else but me is going to ever notice it. I'll show you again the back. You'll see how nice and clean that looks. So, this is not the end of seasoning. 
Seasoning is an ongoing process. You season it every time you use it. A couple of things that I will tell you that a lot of cast iron people would disagree with. But I wash my pans in hot soapy water. Uh, it never hurts them once they're fully polymerized. I use metal um, utensils when I want to use metal utensils. My theory of cast iron is that if I wanted something you had to baby, I would have bought something else. So, uh, to me, this is the most useful, versatile um, cooking uh, variety of pan that you can use. Now, what I'm doing now is, uh, before I put it away, I put a very thin coat. I'm using olive oil right now. You can use anything. And then, at least for the first half dozen times I use it, um, I will put it on the stove, the burner. Um, sorry, after I use it, I'll wash it. I'll put it on the stove burner. I'll bring it up to heat. And then I'll rub it again with some oil. Once a pan, pan is fully seasoned, you don't have to do that every time. But I still do it every third or fourth time until I'm sure uh, that the pan is fully seasoned. You season them by using them. The more you use them, the better for them. If you have a lot of skillets, there's a tendency to uh, use one or two over and over. The others uh, start losing their quality after a while. So rotate your skillets so that they're being used on a regular basis. And I think that looks pretty good if you compare it with how we started. So thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. And I hope you enjoy using your cast iron as much as I do. Thanks.